Okay, hi there, and welcome to a short video looking at some of the connections between Brexit and your macroeconomics paper. Now, Brexit does not appear specifically in the exam specifications for the current round. The, the specs were essentially created and published in 2015, a year before the referendum. However, many students will be making some synoptic connections between Brexit and key macroeconomic policy debates. Even, if they, even though you may not be specifically asked about it, we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, one important distinction is to make between the short-term and the long-term impact and consequences. The short-term is really a focus on what's been happening in the last three years, three years since the referendum happened, and critically, as with all the macro questions, link where you can to the main macro UK variables, which will remind yourselves in a second, inflation, unemployment, growth, all that kind of stuff. Okay. The long term, of course, is much more uncertain, huge uncertainty, deep uncertainty about which way the UK economy is going to be heading, and in particular, what type of deal, trade, investment, uh, labour market deal the UK might eventually confirm with the European Union. So you won't be asked specifically about Brexit, I would think, but you might want to bring in a Brexit perspective. Let me take you through seven examples of how you might bring that into your macroeconomics. The first is the really important issue about whether the UK in a post-Brexit world should stay inside the European Union customs union or should it be outside? We're leaving the single market, uh, we're leaving the European Union in a political sense, but should we remain part of the customs union, the EU free trade area plus the common external tariff? That is a huge issue. I've done an essay plan video on that and I'll link to that in the notes section and the comments section of the, of the video. Another perspective is to bring in the Keynesian idea of animal spirits. There has been, certainly was initially post-referendum, quite a dent to business and consumer confidence. Uh, economic growth in the UK has slowed down. Growth rate last year was just 1.4%. That's half the growth rate of uh, 2014, for example. To what extent is Brexit uncertainty causing a loss of confidence amongst consumers? critically amongst businesses in terms of their planned investment decisions. Uh, another aspect is the possible impact of Brexit going forward if we're outside the single market on foreign direct investment flows, investment decisions. We've had the, the Honda announcement of their closure of their plant in Swindon, which they say wasn't directly Brexit related. Others have disagreed. Uh, is there a risk of some capital flight from the UK? investors taking money out of the UK, what are the consequences for the exchange rate and for the financing, for example, of the current account deficit. Fourth aspect is aid. The UK at the moment commits to keeping 0.7% of our GNI in aid. What next for aid in the UK in a world outside the EU? Will we keep that 0.7% of GNI figure? Hugely important issue, of course, is labour migration, something, something which affects both the demand and the supply side of the economy. Well, we have seen a fall in net migration in the UK in the last couple of years, but equally, uh, there's been a rise in immigration from non-EU countries. There's been, if you like, an unintended consequence. So what, what's the impact of, of uh, Brexit on immigration, the possible effects on productive capacity of the economy, on labour shortages in key industries, in, on food prices, and in uh, the ability to, to staff and fund key public services such as the NHS. Brexit will also have an effect both in the short term and going forward on public finances. The UK is a net contributor to the EU. There will be the, the multi-billion pound divorce deal to, to finance, obviously. But what are the consequences, for example, on government finances? Obviously, that links to the growth rate and uh, funding the NHS. What are the impacts on the balance of payments? Because it's part of our current account, of course. The immediate impact of uh, Brexit vote was a sharp depreciation of sterling in 2016. Again, I've done an essay plan on the effects of a sterling depreciation, which I will link to. And three years on, the pound remains relatively weak against both the euro and other currencies. So what are the consequences there on key variables such as inflation, export competitiveness and uh, the trade balance and so on and so forth. So there's quite a bit that you can link 
Brexit too, my strong advice, and this is incredibly strong advice, is to leave the politics out of your analysis as much as possible. Examiners will not look kindly on political diatribes, either from the Remain or the Brexit side of things. Stick to your economic analysis, stick to your carefully calibrated, subtly balanced evaluation, and you'll be in great shape. Bit of context to finish with. It's quite important to understand what might happen if we leave the customs union. The EU would then be on a bound to impose tariffs on goods and services uh, coming into the EU. The average tariff on dairy products, for example, is 35%, on cereals 13%, sugar and confectionery, a big, big sector for the UK, 24%, clothing, textiles 11%, and 10% on cars and vehicles. So given the UK's uh, quite sizable presence in those sectors, uh, tariffs of those levels, in theory, would have quite a considerable effect on different industries. So there we go, just a brief overview of some of the possible links between Brexit and your macro paper.